Hello Internet, I'm David and this is the Pursuit Blog and in this video I'm sure I'm going to catch a lot of flack, but that's okay. In my last video I asked you what your opinion of porn was, if it ever was permissible, uh, if it ever could be a good thing, and I was really surprised by the feedback that I got from you and lots of people gave me their feedback, but over half treated porn like, like alcohol that as long as it as it's in moderation it's okay and I, I didn't expect that answer from as many people as I did conversely I I felt that some some Christians thought that by my very asking of the question that somehow I was endorsing it and that's not what I was going for but here is my opinion that has been formed out of the Bible that has been formed out of reading and has been formed out of experience about porn and what the big deal about it is and why it can be so dangerous. First I need to address those of you that are Christians and I need to remind you of a couple of verses before I go any further. The first is Romans 12 2 and it says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewal of your minds. Our minds are supposed to be transformed when we come to Christ. We have to allow God to, to change the, our thought patterns. It also says in Philippians, um, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So when I say some of these things, don't immediately get offended. Realize that you know, these are things that the Bible talks about. And we need to allow our minds to start wrapping around those, those ideas instead of embracing what pop culture tells us. Because let's face it, porn has become a huge thing in pop culture. It's nothing for a celebrity to have a sex tape come out or nude photos in a magazine. That's acceptable and I, in, in today's world that's almost a rite of passage to become a big Hollywood star is to flaunt your body all over the place. Porn is wrong. And I believe it is dangerous. It's so addictive. And many of you said and brought up the fact that, you know, as long as it's done in moderation, you say moderation because you realize the addictive nature of it. Now, 1 Corinthians 6 12 says we're not to be slaves to anything. And studies have shown that porn, uh, when you look at porn and, and you masturbate to porn, it produces hormones in your body that release that are incredibly addictive and that's why so many people become trapped by porn and can look at porn for hours and, and just lose track of time they, 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 they become addicted to this rush to this feeling of these hormones that release and it is so problematic because it can take over your life and I asked if for single people it was okay or if it was okay for married people if a spouse uh, agreed to it. And the majority of you said that it was okay for single people to look at porn. But here's the problem with that. Porn diminishes the other sex in your eyes. You look at porn for so long that when you go out into the real world, where we are actually connecting with other people, the women that you see that are really pretty, you start thinking about them and what they would look like if they were naked. Because honestly, if you see somebody pretty in a movie or a TV show, you can go find them naked somewhere and it's this instant gratification. We see people as means to help our sexuality, just as objects to let us feel better. And that's why porn is so dangerous. And it can also set up really bad habits as a single person for relationships. It holds you off. It pulls you aside. It takes you out of community with other people and leaves you in a dark room by yourself for hours. And it will follow you into your marriage and into your relationships. And for married people, porn, porn is a serious problem because it steals the intimacy away from your marriage. It steals that away from your wife or your husband. 
Because your sexual fantasies are with another person, and that does carry into the bedroom. Sexual desire goes down for your spouse. The, the things that you're thinking about when you're becoming intimate are not trained on the person that you said I do with. And that is a direct violation of your marriage vows. In Matthew chapter 5, it's, it's often the most quoted verse when Jesus, of Jesus when he's talking about lust. And it says, if, if you, and he says, if you look at a woman to lust after her, you, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. Jesus has taken seriously this idea of what you think about, what you meditate on, what your sexual fantasies are, that they are real. Jesus says, you might as well have committed adultery with her because you have in your heart. And that is a sin. But it's interesting because in the, in the Greek, the original Greek, the word look is, imper is in the imperfect tense. And that's important because that's not just a glance. Many Christians misconstrue this and they think if you look and see a beautiful woman in a bikini that you, somehow you have sinned. No. Taking a look at a beautiful woman and saying, she's a beautiful woman. She has nice curves. But I'm not going to dwell on that. That is... That, there's nothing wrong with that. It's when you look at somebody and you think about it and you think about it and you think about it. You see a beautiful woman or if you're a woman and you see this beautiful man and you can't get that image out of your head. You just keep replaying that what they look like and, and start wondering what it would like to be with them. That is what Jesus is talking about. The imperfect tense is something that starts and continues. Porn is designed to be just like that. You don't just look at porn and go, oh wow, she's a really pretty woman, and close it and move on. Porn is designed to stick with you. You look at it, you think about it, you meditate on it later, and then uh, two weeks down the road, that same image comes popping up in your head. It's designed to continue, and that is why it's so dangerous. So I encourage you, especially if you're Christian, but even if you're not, to don't just buy the lie that it is okay. It's a selfish thing designed to just gratify yourself and lead you out of relationship with other people and damage the current relationships you have. I've seen porn wreak havoc on families. I've seen porn wreak havoc on people. Run. Run away from it. You say, well, I'm not addicted to porn. Yeah, try giving it up. If you can give it up like that, then you're not addicted to porn. Doesn't mean you need to look at it, but it means you're not addicted to porn. But if you tried giving it up and, you know, a week goes by and you can't handle it, it means you're an addict and you need to talk to somebody. You need to find somebody you can tell this to and help them keep you accountable because it is almost impossible to stop by yourself. So that is why porn is so dangerous from a Christian perspective. As always, I invite your comments or your video responses down below. I'll open that up for you. Uh, this, is a, this is a topic we'll continue on as I do my uh, drive by Jesus experiment this summer because in Proverbs talks a lot about uh, sexual um, things, so to say. Uh, talks a lot about um, some of these issues. And if you don't know what my Jesus drive by Jesus project is, I'm going to be doing a daily vlog walking through Proverbs. So I'm going to take a verse out of Proverbs and I'm going to invite you to do it with me. And I'm going to just try to live it throughout the day. And I'm going to film my life. Hopefully my life is exciting. I've got plenty of stuff coming up, uh, culminating with me going out to VidCon. So it just kind of worked out perfectly that July is going to be like that. So if you're going to be at VidCon 2011 out in California, make sure you give me a holler and maybe we can um, say hey to one another. I hope you have a great day. God bless.